Hey, everybody! It's time for Monster Party! Yes, that's right, it's time for the 2019 Halloween LP! How's it going, everybody? TPG Hunter here, and welcome to, well, what I just announced, the 2019's Halloween LP of Monster Party. A game that we actually took a look at a couple years back during the very first Huntober, you know, before it got rebranded into Huntober trademark. But still, this is a game that I would actually consider to be one of my all-time favorite NES games. It's weird, it's challenging, but not too challenging, and it's creative to a degree. This game unfortunately got heavily censored before it finally became available to us, and throughout the LP I kind of want to go over what the changes were because they're pretty significant changes. This game was basically one big homage to like old monster movies, horror movies, all that stuff, and I want to acknowledge it so it never gets lost to time. But for now, it is time for us to jump in and in just outright appreciate the amazing story that this game has. Mark was walking home from a ball game. He looked up and saw a bright star. I don't know how late was that game because it looks like it's like 10, 30, maybe 11 p.m. by the time he's walking home. While he stared at it, the star got bigger and bigger. The beauty of the star made his eyes moist. Are you sure they're moist? I mean, I've heard of anime eyes, but that's going a little bit too far, Mark. You may want to go see a doctor about that. So he did notice that the star fell and landed right in front of him. It wasn't a star, but a monster, Mark quickly asked. Who are you? I am Bert. What's up? I am looking for a help. Evil monsters are out of control in my world. Come and help me. I'm afraid to fight the evil monsters. Don't worry. With your weapon, you'll be able to destroy them easily. N nice punctuation there, by the way, game. Amaz amazing work. This isn't a weapon, it's a bat. You know, a very deadly weapon if used in the right hands. I mean, what? Bat? Batter? Anything is okay. Anywho, let's go. Bert grabbed Mark's hand and flew away. What's your name? Mark. Mark, my planet is dangerous. So we must act to together. Ow. Like this. Then they fused together. G mm, just, mm, just beautiful, beautiful uh, craftsmanship with this sentence. Th this needs to be hung up in frame somewhere because it just fused together is probably one of my all-time favorite like sayings from this game. This is how Mark's adventure began. And after this literal bloodbath with these, you know, six chillin' skeletons, it is time for us to jump into the game. Now, Monster Party, because it's been a while, I might as well re-go over everything. It is basically a side-scrolling beat-em-up uh, boss rush game. Each area of the game, there's only eight levels in total, have a certain number of monsters inside doors, and you just need to go in and beat the monsters that are in the doors. And then once you get all that, you get the key to the end of the level, and you move on to the next. That's basically the gist of it. Uh, very simple controls. You got jump, you got B, which swings your bat. You, you can drop on the deck and flop like a fish. It's one of my all-time favorite things in this game. And something that I never actually knew until recently, because it's kind of hard to pull off given a D-pad's not very good with angular controls. If you press down like you're flopping on the, on the deck and you go at an angle with it, you can start inchworming yourself across the screen. It's pretty hilarious, I must say. 
Most enemies take around three hits from your bat to kill, unless you decide to redirect one of the projectiles into them, in which case it's an insta-kill for them. I kind of whiffed that one. There we go. Enemies also uh, carry a set item to them. So, like, say, this guy right here. This guy who looks like he's having a good time. I'm going to take care of this fool real quick. There we go. This guy, he will always never carry any items on him. Never. No matter how many times you beat him, it's not RNG. It's literally only certain enemies carry certain items. These guys, on the other hand, like this one, will always drop a piece of health every time you kill him. So you can always just, like, go off screen, go let him respawn, beat him again, and rinse and repeat until you get a lot of health. I will say, grinding for health is really important in this game. Some of these fights are pretty difficult, and thankfully, even though... If you die from all your health being lost, you don't actually, you know, restart the entire game like most NES games were at the time. You just restart the level that you were going into before you lost all your health. But for now, let's head into our first door. Hello, baby! And get into one of the first things of the ultimate enemy to creativity ever. Copyright issues! Instead of being a pitcher plant in the Japanese prototype, this was, you know, even more of what you expect it to be it is a reference to Little Shop of Horrors because this was supposed to be Audrey 3. He, instead of being a pitcher plant, was of course a carnivorous plant like he was in the movie, and also, instead of bubbles he shot at you, it was musical notes because, you know, that whole movie was one big musical. The layout of the arena was also a little bit different. He had an amp sitting behind him and a microphone sitting in front of him, but they had to take care of, to get rid of those actually to, because of the whole copyright issue. However, the amp was a physical object in this game. They never removed the collision from it in the final product, so as soon as we finish him off, I think it should take a couple more bubbles before he can go down. I could probably just run up and start smacking him because... Oh, wait. Nope. That's it. Uh, sometimes just run up and just beating the ever-living hell out of the monsters is a viable strategy than to just redirect the projectiles back at him for the most part. But anyways, back to the amp. Um, they took no collision off it, so if we jump over here, believe it or not, I'm walking on air because they never, you know, got rid of the collision, so the amp is still a physical object in here, and it was basically a platform. The lights up above also stayed in the final version uh, from the prototype edge, you could obviously see. So, at least they kept a few things in. Uh, crap. I was always bad when it came to the redirecting timing. Thankfully, these guys are always here. They'll always respawn, although they do have a set number of items. So, sooner or later, he's going to run out of hearts for us to collect. But, however, we should be good on hearts for a good while now. Level 1 is arguably the, the second easiest level in the game. You still got to fight through a wave of enemies. However, the easiest level in the game doesn't come to, like, level... Five, six, level six. Was it level five? I don't remember. I got to mix up. We'll just keep collecting however many hearts we can. I think he might be almost out right about now. Nope, he's still giving us hearts, so we'll just still keep collecting them. All right, this should do it. I should also say, future me in the process of the editing of this video, hi me. Uh. You might have already seen it during the Audrey 3 fight. He is going to be basically put in the Japanese text if there's anything, like, different from what he has to say. So for now, let's grab ourselves some drugs, and with that, we turn into Bert. And Bert is basically the easy mode of this game. He can fly, he can glide, and he has the only projectile attacks you can use in the game, aside from redirecting the enemy's attacks back at him. He makes a lot of these fights a breeze, and it's kind of sad. Not in sad of the way of, you know, the whole, uh, it, it's sad that it's so easy. It's more sad of, wow, I can't believe you put so little of a fight against him. Anyways, one of the, my all-time favorite en boss enemies here is Burger Lizard, or I guess Burger Dog Monster thing, because that head is very canine looking. It, it, it's a big meme where the whole sorry I'm dead thing is, and unfortunately he doesn't respond, which is sad because I'd never really acknowledge sorry I'm dead until he was too late. So let's just keep going, smacking his legs. I think one of these guys drops another uh, pill for us to take. Or maybe not. I think we're pretty good on health for the final boss of the area. 
Hi! Welcome to the corrupted side of Bird's Planet. Yeah, a lot of people always get really confused as to what the hell happens every time you pass this cat. This right here, I guess, prototype gyroid from Animal Crossing? My personal theory on it is basically that this is what the big, like, bad monster who has taken over the planet is corrupting it into. Like, the happy-go-lucky one was basically a... what his plan originally was for Bert, but then it's slowly being corrupted into... Oh, seriously? That counted as being hit? Uh, this is slowly corrupting into it, because once we get a good look at the final boss of the game, it kind of makes sense with that theory. Another theory is basically that this is actually what Burst Planet looks like to begin with, and it's just showing its true nature. Please don't pick on me. Or wait, no, sorry, I screwed it up. <clears throat> Let me try it again. Please don't pick on me. I wanted to give it a more ghostly type feel for this. So, Pumpkin Boy over here, he is actually wasn't even originally in this game. This fight was a lot different in the prototype, because in the Japanese prototype, this was all big one Planet of the Apes reference. Basically, instead of fighting Jack over here from Animal Crossing, uh, it was instead an ape on a horse who, instead of shooting pumpkins at you, he shot actual live bullets at you. In the background, it wasn't just a blank space, it was basically the Statue of Liberty with a bunch of destroyed buildings around it, as if it could hammer home any harder that this was a Planet of the Eights reference. Which... Uh, I really don't see Planet of the Eights as a horror movie, more of like a sci-fi thriller movie. No reason to go into any of the doors down there either, because we already got the key. Once you get the key, it's a good indicator that, hey, you're done with this, you don't have to go through any of these other doors, you just need to go to the door that looks different and finish the level. Which we have just done. That dog thing still creeps me out. I know that's an actual yokai that they actually used in this game. I forget its name. Future Me is probably going to throw it up on screen right now. It, it's a, it, I like that they mix Western and Japanese mythologies together to kind of create this weird little amalgamation of you know, poor classics. Such as this thing! I don't know what to classify it as. Do you call it a reverse mermaid, or do you call it a merman? Since, you know, mermaids have the fish legs and the human body, and a merman would have the human legs and the fish body. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Leave it down in the comments. What do you think this is? A merman or a reverse mermaid? For now, uh... Ah, crap, I didn't mean to get hit by him. His... <clears throat> hitbox for these guys is a little weird, given their position. I guess you could say it's a little rectangular. Damn it, I didn't mean to respawn that thing. But... I don't know. I always felt like it stretched out a little bit further than what the actual, you know, sprite was. For now, we're gonna just keep grinding up on health, because, you know, a lot of health is always really good to have in these kind of... kinds of games. Can't talk tonight. Give it a couple good smacks. And we'll just keep going until we max out our health. It's really important that we max out our health in this level, to be honest, because from the past couple of times, from the few failed recordings and the couple of uh, test runs I've done in this game, in level two, health is very far and in between when it comes to the drops from like I can only think of two maybe three other areas which are very spaced out from each other where uh, the fish guys drop health pills on the other hand oh man this place is just littered with them it is a junkie's dream down here all right if we can actually go into this boss fight with max health that'd be great I don't think so he probably only has like a couple more stacks of health on him before he's completely depleted now, if you were a genius like me, which thankfully you're not, you could actually make this boss fight up here even easier than it already is going to be, although, to be fair, it's kind of a crapshoot at times. If we go down this way and pass the gator over here, there's another wall thing, wall mouths, whatever, this thing down here. There's one of these down here that drops a burp pill. If you want to transform to fight the boss, that's good. However, I'm feeling spry. I want to, you know what, I want to go give it the good old one-two. So we're going to go in and do that. Let's mix it up, says Medusa. Medusa, 
looks a lot different from her Japanese counterpart. Instead, she looks like her true mythological self being, you know, the human with the, the snake hair do. And yes, before you ask, instead of uh, she still shoots shoot Tsuchinoko at you. Yes, I actually know the term of that yokai. Thank you very much. I'm a big nerd. Uh, she doesn't actually shoot laser beams that transform you into stone. Nope, it's Tsuchinoko all the way with her. Thankfully, I'm surprised I actually did so well against her. For the longest time, I figured that you just need to redirect the Tsuchinoka that she shoots at you. Back at her, and you couldn't actually physically hit her with your bat. But no, you can just go up and just wail on her. And it's arguably the best choice. Bert's also a good choice because, you know, he can just spam multiple shots at her. However, I feel like to just run up and just start beating the ever-living hell out of her is a much more viable option. Watch that get taken out of context. And the reason uh, Medusa looked different in this version of the game instead of, you know, her traditional appearance, instead of just being a giant snake with more snakes, which, I gotta admit, that's a pretty creative take on her uh, mythology design, is because of Nintendo. It wasn't actually censorship because of the whole, you know, copyrighted monster designs and stuff. Nintendo didn't want you to go and beat up a woman with a baseball bat or, I guess, shoot dragon lasers at her in, a, in an NES game rated D10. Even though, given some of the things that we've seen and are going to see later in this game, an, an E rating on this is not well designed. I, I, I will say, ah, damn, these guys have bad uh, hitboxes. Whatever, we're Bert. Let's keep going. Thankfully, I've run these levels so many times that I actually have the the boss doors engraved into my memory. The boss doors remain the same throughout every time, so if you know where one door is, one run, it's going to be the same for every other run. Just go past this obvious aliens reference. I'm surprised it doesn't shoot face huggers at me. Look out, baby, says this giant tempura shrimp. Here I come. Yeah, I don't get it either. This is one of the other reasons why I like this game. It's just really weird when it comes to some of the monster designs. Like, who's afraid of shrimp? I mean, I guess technically high cholesterol is a very scary concept. Maybe that's the reason why they were designing this. I honestly don't get it. The only other reference I could think of is the fact that the machines from the fly are in the background. And now we fight onion rings. Or I guess a singular onion ring, to be honest. This fight is also different in the Japanese prototype. It wasn't changed. No, you still have to fight that shrimp all all day long. However, the fight was very sh uh, short and very down. I don't know if it uh, affected its health in any way, but instead of fighting, you know, onion rings in a skewer of whatever the hell this is supposed to be, you just fought the shrimp. That was it. Let's give him a few more good whacks. I can usually fight this boss without taking any hits because it's just really easy to combo a hit into them. I'm just being really greedy with my attacks. But there we go. We got it. And already we've hit over a million score. Yeah, looking at the stain, it, it's like the, the it's like the Rolling Stones lips uh, sadistic cousin. Let's keep passing the blood driplets. Ah, damn it. Ah, come on. There we go. One of you had health, I believe. That door up there is a fake door. Don't go to it. Trust me, it's not worth it in the end. Alright, uh, I think that's right where he ends. Yep. I think you drop a burp pill. Nope. No, it was the gator. Yoink. The final boss of the super area, thankfully, is right up at that door right there. We just need to find a way to get to him, which it's a pretty long run, and going into this boss fight with Bird is preferable. It's just kind of hard to get him there with a good amount of time. But hopefully we should have enough time to be able to finish this boss off. Time to do some damage, says this haunted well. Yeah, this is one of the more Japanese-esque enemies, as you can tell by the well and the wisps and the stuff. Although, I don't know why it's shooting plates at us. Like, if there's anyone who's, like, more versed in yokai lore and mythological lore for the 
uh, Japanese mythology. Please let me know why it's shooting plates at me. Is that like a Japanese thing? I'm just not really getting it. But anyways, with the well taken care of, we have gotten the key for the area. All we need to do is just reach the very end. Ah. And going into area three with, uh, at th this rate, this much health, probably shouldn't be the best option. Hopefully there's at least one more enemy that drops he health. Hopefully. Maybe. I've actually had a pretty good run so far. Ugh. At this rate, I don't think so. Nope. I know for a fact these two don't drop anything, so... We're gonna be able to grind a little bit of health in the, the cave area. Ah. Always mess the timing up on these things. Oh. There we go. Use that warp pipe like an Italian plumber, and let's get out of here.